All right, before I get started, I wanted to say that this will require some previous knowledge of UMG. I do bounce around it a little bit. I apologize. This is a very weird, uh, undocumented subject. Uh, so I'll probably do a video in the future and a little bit better done template that I'll release. All right, with that, let's get into it. All right, so here is the common button versus the standard button. As you can see, the common UI button has a lot more events to it, and we'll be getting into those later. Uh, but I wanted to show you that just how much more functionality it has built in. And that's how all of the common UI buttons are, is it takes the standard base whatever widget and extends it to add what common functionality is, well, commonly used. Okay, let's switch over to the editor. And here's one example that right away you can see. And it's that there is this, uh, in the plugin section, you can set these template styles. And if you've ever set up a UMG, you already know what these are. With the button one, it's the uh, color and tint when it's pressed. And then with the text, it's the font, the font size, etc., and the border, same as the button. Okay? And you can set this up as a template. So that way you can use one all over the place, and that's what the common UI stuff's all about. So let's move on to creating our first button using this and how to apply it. Okay, so here I'm going to create a common button base. Uh, you're going to notice they're empty. Uh, by default, and that's because after you add something, it's going to create its button base for you. Now, I'm going to kind of speed through here, um, but I'm going to add a text and then a common action. I am somewhat assuming you guys know what you're doing. Uh, the only thing different is how you're going to set the style. Instead of having style drop down, you're going to have a style file that you apply on a common text, as well as the common button. The same thing is in the blueprint, you're going to set the defaults and you're just going to set the default style. So for the button base itself, you're going to have to go to graph and then class defaults. And you're going to notice that style button. And from here, uh, you just assign the style. Uh, you're going to notice, though, and what's more important is there's a lot of checkboxes here. And it's to hide the input action. It's And basically, there's a couple other ones to make it selectable or not. And then uh, kind of a little more finite controls of whether it should be hidden with a keyboard, et cetera, or if we use a default button. Um, and those are something you can explore and you can basically feed that to the child input action uh, to make sure that it's hidden when it needs to be. You see here that I've added two things. I've added a set text so that when we place the button, we can set the text. And then I've also added a set input action. And this is setting the common action widget be the input action that is assigned to the button base because that's exposed when placing another blueprint. All right, for this part, we're going to be making a common activatable widget. So I've already made a little template. Uh, it's just confirm or close with the with a mouse. We're just going to open the menu, and we have the option to close the menu. With the gamepad, it works the same way, except why do we need the common activatable widget? Uh, this is basically used in place of just a standard uh, user widget. And it's going to contain anything that we want activated and deactivated. That's where this comes in really handy. So what do I mean by that? Um, this is where I think my example could probably go even further. You can have it where you have multiple things on your screen. And based on your button selections, other things you do, you activate only certain widgets at the same time. And when activated, you can give it focus. As you can see here, uh, the way we're actually removing it is using the activation deactivation. Um, so all I do is deactivate the widget when I hit that button. Now, uh, so the class settings for the activatable widget are a little different than the button. And that is that they have this back handler, which will automatically handle pressing back for you. And what I mean by handling back for you is using the common input setting uh, back action. Uh, but then you also have the choice of whether or not these widgets should automatically activate, which we can have activation events. So we can choose to do different things on activation, which I have it set to automatically activate. And then it, when it's created, it's in focus. All right. And then there is these buttons here. This is the activated visibility and the deactivated visibility. Basically, depending on what it is, it's going to be visible or not. And as you can see, we auto activate. So it would be automatically visible if we use these settings. Um, now we could change that and we can make it where it doesn't auto activate. And we would have a different scenario where, say, we want it to only be activatable after we hit a certain button. We hit that button, we tell it to activate. And now that's in focus. Now, because the activation is 
exposed, you can control a lot of things. And some other common widgets also use it. So you could use like the common widget switcher. Um, and like this is where it's kind of hard to make a template for this because it's basically you're going to create a menu and then you're going to decide whether or not something should be activated or not. And I wish I had a little bit better of an example of this. I apologize. Uh, I'll work on that. And then I think that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to be making another video on some other common input action. And I think once we get it all together, maybe I'll release a template that's a little more fleshed out. If you do want to learn a little bit more about how some of this works, I do recommend opening the code in Visual Studio or whatever your uh, choice is and 